if you can take that step back for a moment and just see it for what it really is, you start to detach yourself from ideas of helping others, doing good for others, making them think in the same way as you. There is no room for the ego to feel a sense of superiority because of their own achievement in spirituality and there's zero room for judgment towards anyone else. And this is where we need to start thinking about in our own life, have we ever felt superior, better, higher because we're on a spiritual journey or because of anything that we've achieved in our life? When are the moments that we've looked down on others? Sometimes when I receive a message on social media, I might, might watch a video of someone who is falling down or making a mistake or doing something or acting in a way that I don't feel is in, in line with how I would act. And then you see all of your friends on your social media chats and they're openly saying how foolish this person is, how stupid this person is, how ignorant some people can be. You can't believe that there are people like this in the world. And it's at those moments that I think we need to take a step back and realize that nobody is acting in a way that is in their control. Absolutely everyone is acting based on what they feel is right. Even if you think someone is doing the absolute worst thing in the world, even at that moment, you have to realize that for that person, what they think they're doing is absolutely right. And why they think they're doing that is based on years of conditioning, years of them living the life that they've lived. And we can never judge someone else because we've not lived their life. We've not walked in their shoes. We don't know all the things that have impacted them and molded them to become the person that they've become. So this idea of judging who we think we're better, whether we think we're better than someone else, is something that isn't just about spirituality, isn't just about things in life where you feel you're better than someone else. It's about reflecting at every opportunity where you see there's a chance for you to think about someone else even if they're acting in the worst way, in ways that you could never imagine yourself doing, use that as an opportunity to, to awaken yourself to realize that, hey, that could have been me. I could be that person acting in that way. Not me in the life that I'm in, I'm in now, but me if I was born into, into the same house and the same circumstances as that person there. So realize that we're all helpless. No one is actually capable of doing anything. Everyone is living out their actions based on all of the influences in their life, all the things that have led to them becoming who they are as a person. So there really is no room for judgment and ego on the spiritual path. And one of the questions that often arises when we're looking at other people and where we've made certain choices that we think we've made in our life to follow a certain path, to have a certain belief system, to have certain values or to live by certain principles is that we try to educate other people to also live by those. And this is something that's really common with parents is they often ask, how do I teach this wisdom to my children? How do I help other people? And the message coming time and time again from the Guru is this is nothing to do with you. This is all to do with grace. So you might have really good intentions to try and help other people and you might want to put a lot of effort to help others. And while that's a great thing to do because you're sharing the wisdom that's benefited your life, you want other people to benefit from that, that's you giving your time and effort to, to, to improve someone's life. You need to have a, set, a sense of detachment on whether they will be able to receive it or not, whether they'll be ready to pick up that wisdom itself. Your effort is to try, but you shouldn't get disheartened if someone else isn't ready to receive. If someone's not ready to take this wisdom on board, then that's not on you. You've put that effort in to try and help them. And you have to reflect that there was a time in your life where you didn't understand this wisdom. There was a time in your life where you weren't ready 
to live according to these principles. You didn't always think in this way. And in the same way that we shouldn't judge someone else because they're not ready, we also shouldn't get disheartened if they're not going to be the person who's ready to receive this right now. And that becomes a really difficult thing for us to accept because we feel that everyone should be living according to our principles. We feel like our children must and should carry on our belief systems, our traditions, our understanding, the wisdom that's helped us. We have to do everything that we can to, to help them. And what we're not including in that equation is the element of grace. What we're forgetting is that we're not responsible for how we think now. We're not responsible for how we've been blessed to have this understanding in our life. And so in the same way, we need to understand that if they are to receive that wisdom, it really is the Guru's blessing. It's the blessing of the Enlightener, which is that spirit of oneness giving itself in the form of wisdom to our minds. And remember, it's not our mind, it's the, the mind of the oneness. So when you take a step back and you see it for the play that it really is, you realize it's just God playing with God, God being the invisible oneness, God being the physical manifested form, God being the ignorance and God being the wisdom, God deluding one part of itself and then creating the enlightener to enlighten another part of itself. So it's this beautiful game that if you can take that step back for a moment and just see it for what it really is, you start to detach yourself from ideas of helping others, doing good for others, making them think in the same way as you. Yes, by all means, we should try and help them, but don't have this grasp on this idea that they must be like that because it's really all down to divine grace. No one can be forced to be awakened. Nobody can be trained, nobody can be encouraged, and nobody can be shown so deeply that we make them change. The only thing that we can do is that we can if we feel we know anything, if we feel that this wisdom has benefited our life in any way, we can show it to a few other people. We can try and pass it on to whoever we can. We can try and expose our friends, our family, our children to this wisdom. But we cannot be responsible whether they will get it or not because every person is individual and who knows what journey they need to go on for, for them to come out the other side, to realize the things that you realize in order to be on this path yourself. Who knows what they need to go into? So we can show people, we can encourage people to understand it, but we must take a step back and realize this is all the Guru's grace. Nothing is happening outside of the grace. So we have to have a part of our mind that just surrenders to accepting that this is all part of the divine system. And remember, that's the biggest part of your divine experience. You surrender to everything that is happening in life. And when you surrender, you begin to understand that everything is the divine flow.